posted this video uh, asking what gait this horse is performing, and my answer of this is the fox trot or broken trot or beginning stages of the rack right now. If you look at his footfall, right there you got the right front, then the left rear. The left front's getting ready to hit, the right rear it did, and now the right rear, uh, the right front's getting ready to hit, it just now landed, now the left rear. Uh, the left front is getting ready to hit right there, now the right rear. Here comes the right front. Right, right front's down, then right rear. So what you got is he's, he's on the diagonal. Um, a lot of people would call this the foxtrot. Uh, it's, he's, he's, he's going to be a racking horse when he's finished, but right now he's really trotty. So what we got here, let's look at this. <clears throat> the right front is getting ready to hit, right there it is. Now the left rear, now the left front's getting ready to hit, right there it touches, now the right rear. So what we can do to help this horse stop trotting is we can either slow um, the back end down, the timing of the back end down, the back feet. So what we want to do is, uh, is let the front, or speed the front end up. So if we get the front feet needs to hit the ground just a little bit faster than the back feet, or we can slow the timing of the back feet down from the front feet. So, so right now, like I said, he's on the trotty side. He's on the diagonal more than, than he is an even four-beat gate. He's not performing an even four-beat gate, but he is performing a four-beat gate. It's just not even. He's very trotty. So what, like I said, what we can do is slow his back end down, make him reach a little deeper, or speed his front end up. That's what needs to be done with this horse, and that's what I'm doing. I'm working on that. So right now, we would, I, would call this, I would call this the rack, the beginning stages of the rack, or a lot of people would call it a foxtrot. Um, I don't call it the foxtrot because, just because of his action, the way the horse carries itself. Let's look at the difference here between the original video of him performing the broken trot or the fox trot versus this one. Notice his legs on his left side, they're going in power. See that? His left rear hit, now his left front's getting ready to hit right there. Now his right side, his right rear hit, and his right front's getting ready to hit. There it is, now his left rear, now just now hit, now his left front. His right rear hit now, and his right front now. Now his left rear is now, and his left front just now hit right rear, right front, left rear, left front. Your left rear, your left front, etc. Right rear, right front, left rear, left front, right rear, right front. He's now moving in a lateral four beat gate, which is the rack. This isn't him, I just added this picture so I could have a second to talk to you during this video. So what we've got is, I've had a horse, he's extremely trotty. He's trot, 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 trot. Um, I started off with a, with a half inch shoe on the back of him, trying to encourage his, his gait a little bit. I actually had him barefoot on the front for a while. Um, the half inch helped him a little bit, but he, he still needed a lot of work. Uh, as he started, he finally started hitting just a little bit with a half inch. So when he did do that, uh, I, I went ahead and moved him down to a three eighths because my, my goal is to get him on keg shoes. Um, nobody wants a, a trail horse with a big shoe. Now don't get me wrong, I'm off for natural, but if I need to add a, a heavy shoe or something to the back or the front of one to uh, encourage them to, to move their feet, it's just a little bit different for temporary uh, until they build their muscle memory, then uh, that's what I'll do sometimes. So after I took him off the half inch shoe, went to a three eighths, he, he began trotting hard again. I rode him like that for a couple of weeks uh, and he, he eventually started hitting with the three eighths, or gating rather, uh, I call it hitting. Uh, it's a little bit of a redneck terminology. But uh, he started gating with a three eighths, so then I moved him on down to a keg shoe. Uh, the keg shoe actually has a homemade uh, metal plate welded in the toe of it. This will help him get his back end underneath him a little further, make him extend his stride a little bit, um, and teach him his gait. Uh, and he's actually doing better with it than he did the half inch or the three eighths, just because basically he's a little bit on the lazy side and the three eighths and half inch 
he couldn't hardly swing his back in as deep as what he can with the toe weight. So my next step is, right now he's got the toe weight uh, shoe on the back, he's got a light keg shoe on the front, diamond light keg shoe. Um, I, my, my next goal is, obviously you can see that he's gating now, he is actually performing the rack. My goal is now I'm trying to set his head. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to force his head, but I'm just teaching him to carry himself with a lower head, which, which would be my, my goal of my finished product. Uh, once I start setting his head, obviously he starts uh, going back into the trot, which is what you're seeing in this video. The beginning of the video is actually uh, pretty, pretty current. Uh, he's actually starting to trot just a little bit more with me, which has to be expected. Had I set his head from day one, I wouldn't even be as far as I am with his gating. We'll set his head after we get it after we get him gating. So right now, as you see in the video, his head still is a long ways from being set. I barely have any, any just le least little bit of a tie down on him. Just to, just to slowly, just to gradually start bringing him down. And as he starts gaining uh, more of his lateral movement and getting into his rack, I'll I'll slowly start bringing his head in a little more, and he's gonna go. Go right back to diagonal, and I'm going to, I'm going to slowly keep riding him like that until he gets lateral on me again, and then eventually I'll have a finished racking horse. Once he learns to carry himself and, and perform the rack with his head halfway decent, I don't need it to be perfect, but I do need it to come down a little bit. Once he learns to carry himself in a collected manner, I will, I will probably just go ahead and remove uh, the toe weight shoe from the back and he'll have four keg shoes. That would be my, my finished product. And more than likely, this, this guy is going to be very stylish. He's got a great big front end, a lot of lift, and which is actually what hurts him and makes him uh, harder to put in gate than most horses. The reason being is because he's, he's got uh, so much lift in his front feet, it, it actually it's slowing his timing down on his front. Uh, had he uh, not been lifting his feet so high, his feet would actually would come down quicker, touch the ground, ground quicker, and he would be moving more lateral. But being that he's reaching so, so much with his front end, it's causing him to be a little bit more trottier than what uh, a lot of horses are. He's got everything going for him of whatever a lot of people's looking for in a good racking horse. He's trotty, he's very square, he will gate, He's blowed back in the bridle, he's got a big front end, and he's got a lot of speed. It's going to take some time, but when I'm finished with him, he's going to be one of a kind. He's going to be extraordinary.